hey, what's up, Brennan? I'll pass you an invite too. You're more than welcome to come up and speak. Um, just kind of going over some introductory stuff. I've got a couple of links above to projects that I am working on. Uh, first one to the right is actually the recorded session from the last time we did this two weeks ago. And then I've got the new short story that I was working on last year and released. It is now out on Amazon KDP audiobook in process. Um, shooting for an April release. Don't know if I'm going to hit that deadline, but we'll see. Um, it's partially edited. So that's coming along and I'm doing an audio play version with sound effects and music and stuff multi-voiced as well for that. Like I did for the relic last year. And then the final link all the way to the left is a short preview of some AI film stuff that I'm working on with a group of folks. And our first short is going to premiere tomorrow here on Twitter. So I'll be kind of boosting that up as it comes out. But what are you doing, man? How's it been? Um, hey, great to see you. Hear you, Michael. Um, yeah, I'm really glad to hear and see you putting out so much work and high quality work. It's just awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've been uh, definitely uh, pursuing how to scale up, getting things like books and other things in front of lots of eyes. Um, and so I've got a number of different uh, references that you know that I'll that I'll be sharing with you. Yeah, very um, cool. yeah, because it, you know, so obviously the whole the whole you know marketing thing is the challenge, right? A lot of work required. I would say, you know, we do a load of work as writers or authors or media producers in the background. And, it, you know, as best as I think we can try to talk process while it's happening, it's very difficult to be in the function of creativity and also in the function of documentation. Um, they're just two vastly different mindsets. And I think that, like, sometimes we miss documenting some really cool stuff that's happening along the way. But if you can occasionally take some little snapshots or offer a little bit of insight into the process, that's always super valuable. I think in terms of the promotion and kind of broadcasting that you are working on something and that you are promoting something that will be, uh, you know, available in hopefully the near future or soon or whatever, you know, the, the goal is, um, for me, my schedule for the next two years is that I'm going to do fiction in the spring in terms of writing, you know, uh, my, my book releases and stuff. I'm going to do fiction in the spring and then I'll do more, um, journalistic kind of, uh, stuff in the fall that'll be paperback. So the spring stuff will be ebook and then audiobook, And then the later in the year, fall material will be, um, you know, photographic and, um, paperback stuff. And it'll also have an audiobook component that goes along with that as well. But what are you working on? <laughs> what am I working? On? Well, uh, so in the realm of books and content, I am really just kind of formulating that. I'm, I'm I actually realized I came to this job. Well, let me, let me take a step back. This just might be useful. So let me make a comment first in terms of your process, which I, I, I think might be useful. And then I'll segue into, you know, what, kind of what I've been thinking about, which, you know, may or may not be useful. But you, you hit a really salient nugget when you said documenting, right? You know, so we tend to think about, okay, you make some content and then you, you know, somehow you figure out how to, to cobble together some kind of marketing for it or something like that, right? Um, but you used the word document, which I found really, really interesting, right? Because it exemplifies that in all that we do, that there is lots of underlying process, right? But it is that underlying process for those who haven't done it or those who have done it, who are seeking better ways, you know, which is like the golden gem, right? So, you know, if you're going to create a, if you're going to create an ecosystem, right. I did um, illustrate a point. If you're going to create an ecosystem for your, your book and content, you know, of course you have 
of you know your readers or your followers or however you want to describe them, right? But within that or adjunct to that, there's there's you know the ecosystem of people who just want to know, well, Michael, how the hell did you do it? <laughs> you know, and this is what I'm impressed with you about. It's like I see you churning out all this stuff, and I'm like, wow, you know, this guy's got something going on here, man. He's figured something out, and. You know, it, it, it's the process and and the reveal reveal of that process, which in some cases is you know a whole nother ecosystem and a whole nother valuable ecosystem, right? Because some people just want to read your books, right? But there's probably a whole lot of other people who just want to know, well, how the heck did you do it, right? <laughs> so pursuing both of those ecosystems simultaneously is, uh, I think, worth pondering and, and you probably have and, and, and you, you do I know you do because you you know you're always forthcoming with stuff so I'll, I'll leave it with that and let you comment I'm sorry for blathering on here but I just wanted to provide some context sure yeah don't sweat it this is a conversational space this is not a, a holding court sort of scenario but I'm happy to discuss whatever aspects of that you would like I suppose maybe the first thing I would say um, in regards to my output or the frequency or um, just the nature of production in general is that I, bef okay, so my first book came out in 2019. Um, and what happened then is I had done a long form thread. Um, also, I just muted you because there was some background noise, but you're, you know, free to unmute whenever you're speaking and stuff. Um, so that came out of a long form thread in 2018 that I gathered up and then basically compiled into what I thought was like a, a very rough manuscript. And then I went and filled in some gaps in, in terms of like there were just phrases and thoughts and turned them into sentences or, or closer to paragraphs. And then I started to look at it thematically and break it up that way and push things around into like 10 to 12 segments for that Chicago 1893 book. While I was doing that, um, I had been blogging about national parks for a few years as I was visiting them. And after I got that Chicago book out, I was looking around and saying like, oh, you know, what can I do next that is most viable? And I went and looked at the, I guess at that point in time, it was maybe 15 or 16 parks that I'd been to and said, okay, how can I get this stuff out? Um, you know, what's the most ready? And there were like eight or nine parks that were more fleshed out narratively or just more complete and available to uh, release more rapidly. So that became the next book that I put out in 2020. And then as I was kind of moving forward from there, um, I had been sitting on an idea that was in a very rough shape before I had even done either of those two books. And that was the personal branding and con content marketing workshop book that I did and turned a video series out for. And that the nugget of that book, actually I had started before the other two. I just hadn't gotten anywhere with it. I'd been writing and then all of a sudden it kind of clicked for me and how I wanted to do that and release that book. So that became the next piece, the third book that I put out. And then, um, you know, and then I went and did another uh, National Parks book. And then I kind of did the small business content marketing book after that, which is kind of a, a retread of the, the branding book, but with uh, some new information, some new graphics, a new case study and stuff like that. So here's what I would say is that like, I always have stuff in the hopper, right? I always have some material that is like in some form of progress. And that way I can kind of shift my attention as one thing is be beginning to get close to being finished. I can kind of jump over and start giving some attention to something else and kind of start heating up that iron and start kind of forging it, you know, as well. And, um, 
that has been the way I've been doing it since, you know, 2018, 2019, to be able to release a paperback every year. So this year I'll be doing volume three of the National Park series. That manuscript is, I would say, like 75, 80 percent, 85 percent of the way there currently. I've already started recording audiobook chapters for that as it turns out because I'm going to do a, another series of videos using the photography and video that I recorded when I was out uh, visiting those parks which was in 2022. So this stuff kind of you know I'm, I'm I'm always looking for you know things that I can kind of explore and work on and release that way and uh you know so my fiction short story for next year I'm about a third of the way through writing that manuscript. I intend to get it done before the end of this year um, or very near to finished at the the very beginning of next year. Um, and and that's that's kind of how I do it, Brandon, to be honest with you. I, I just kind of uh, keep a number of things uh, right on my phone or on my computer and make a chip away at the progress because at this point now, I kind of know how my my process goes. Um, you know, I have a kernel of an idea. I keep kind of fleshing it out and building it up, getting it to the state that I want it to be in, um, in terms of like editorial manuscript. And then in the past I did the audiobooks after the paperbacks, but now after having done, I guess, you know, five paperbacks or whatever, uh, six, five six yeah something or including the audiobooks i've got like six or seven releases now so the what i do is i use that audiobook reading as a final proofing mechanism for the editorial so i actually read the audiobook um, performance before i put out the paperback or the ebooks um, and that way I, I just get a final sense of like is all of this the way that i want it to be um, and that then allows me to, as soon as that, that ebook or that paperback is released to really shift gears into the audiobook production. And I already have all the files. It's still fresh, you know, from kind of the editing and layout phase, um, and having recorded that audiobook. So it basically allows me to get into the, the, the compilation of that audiobook work and get that out within like a month or two, usually after the, the ebook paperback is released. So that's, you know, a bit of how, you know, I've been doing it for the last couple of years, if that makes sense for you. Um, yeah. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so you do the, uh, you, you basically do the ebook and manuscript first and then do the audio book. Uh, and the audio book allows you to, to basically fine tune. And then you do like, and then after that, you do just a regular book, a hard print book or the ebook and paperback I do together in tandem. And let me say this, actually, I do the paperback layout and I just port that over to ebook. So I don't do two separate layouts or anything. I basically just one to one the paperback layout into the ebook um, because there's typically a lot of imagery and stuff like that. And I don't want it kind of shifting around however they might decide to move it around. So that's, you know, my process. Um, I am on Mac OS, so I use pages and then push that out into a PDF that loads up to K K KDP very easily and then is imported into Kindle create, which is the platform, the piece of software that they advise that you use for creating your ebook files which is like a kpf file huh, um, okay and you know i'm i'm happy to help with you know whatever you're working on if that's something that you want to do um yeah sure we we can we can um yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not up to that you know i'm kind of like just planning mm -hmm. um but yeah, that that's definitely that definitely would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, I've done it. Uh, like I said, you know, a handful of times at this point, and you know, my next paperback will be out in in the fall, um, and then next year I've got another project that I'm kind of dabbling with um, right now that I you know need to spend some percentage of time on <laughs> over the next 
10 months kind of just getting a, a manuscript in shape because it's kind of big. It'll be probably my longest book paperback project. Um, and I'm trying to keep it, uh, I'm trying to keep it like sensible, but at the same time, uh, just knowing what it is and how that layout is going to be, it will probably be like 180 pages, which is not incredibly long, but is longer than the other stuff that I've done, which is more photojournalistic and, uh, you know, image based. And like, I don't know that I have a book out that is over 10,000 words. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it seems it sounds like a lot to me, but, <laughs> but um, wow, yeah, that's all. That's all really, really great. That's all really great. Um, so, what did you think about my my thought there about um, you know you growing your your you know your process of I mean not just how you do books in general, right, but also like you know like specifically related to your content, right? Like so, like I mean, I I could think of it like this. Um, cause I'm trying to figure out like, you know, wh- what goes through my mind when I think of you as an author and how, how you can grow your base in, in, you know, nonlinear ways. Right. So, you know, it's, co- it's almost like, you know, like, you know, like when you watch a movie and you see the, uh, you know, the, the last five minutes of the movie, they're like, well, you know, how we actually made this stuff. And, you know, sometimes you get the bloopers, sometimes you get like all this, all this other stuff, you know, the background thinking, or you have, you know, you have a, a, you know, a movie and they have the, you know, the director's voiceover and all that in terms of like what they were thinking when they were making that, you know, and that kind of stuff, like your internal mental process, not just like how you physically do the, you know, the, the publishing ebook and all that, but that, I mean, that's helpful too. Um, that would be helpful, obviously, to me, to lots of other people, but separate from that level of detail, which is its own thing, is, you know, your process about, you know, how you think about the content and whether that's, you know, whether that's worth it for your, your audience or a slightly different group of your audience or something like that. Well, Just a thought. Yeah. And I, I guess I do that to a degree, you know, um, I don't know that I've released anything as particularly meta as that. Um, Whereas like I have not released a book that's about making books, uh, though, you know, lots of people do. Um, There's probably something there. (laughs) There's probably uh, a viable project there. I don't know that I am necessarily as experienced or renowned enough to advise people on, you know, how they should go about it. I, I just have my way of going about it. I suppose these sessions that we have are generally um, the opportunity for me to give a little bit of that background to be process oriented, uh, production oriented, but then also promotional in the same way. Um, I guess additionally, when I've done other podcast appearances, I I have gone into those things as well. Uh, I don't want to say that I have, a typical line of discussion points, but people I think come to that interview process from very similar points and will ask questions that are similarly shaped. And so I've probably talked about some of that stuff to a degree in the past, but I have not uh, formalized any of that stuff into something that, that I've released though, in terms of my like approach to content production, uh, and the relationship with marketing for media and projects and businesses and stuff, I would say those two books that I have out do some of that in terms of the production side. Now they aren't a behind the scenes look, too deeply at the stuff that I'm releasing. Um, though I do, I have, you know, tweeted about a lot of that over the years, um, you know, with the documentary project and whenever I'm using tools, I try to show a little bit of under the hood, you know, and what I'm doing. I don't try to give away too much of like what I'm working on particularly. Cause I like that to be its own thing. 
uh, a lot of times. Um, though even like on this, uh, like that middle tweet for Relic of the Aztecs, there's a follow up tweet on there where I have a screenshot of the audiobook audio play version layout and that you know is is a little bit of behind the scenes like it, i don't think that you can't necessarily interpret the audio or understand what's going on there uh from looking at the picture but it does certainly kind of show how much raw audio and and sound i'm kind of throwing at the wall um in that first line of production for for that with all the sound effects and stuff and you know since i since i did that screen cap which i think i took that um you know maybe two weeks ago or something like that i shared it out quite a while after i initially captured it um you know i've done a little bit of editing on that and whittled down some of those things and started kind of laying them out in time a little bit more. There's a lot of work that still has to go into that, but those, those kind of things I, I think are, um, you know, getting after the behind the scenes aspect that you were talking about, hopefully. Yeah. I'm always curious about the, uh, you know, how people can, you know, take what they're doing and kind of reframe it into, uh, you know, an, another community or an, another set of, of values and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all very interesting. Um, I think for myself, I'm gonna, I'll switch kind of gears to kind of more to my second question, or maybe it's more of a statement than a question, but, sure. um, you know, it's interesting because as I have gone down this rabbit hole of, okay, you know, how do you actually break the, um, you know, break the, uh, you know, Facebook advertising barrier, so to say, right? Facebook or, or whatever, right? You know, yeah. um, we, you know, we all know there's, there's a huge amounts of challenges there and, and, you know, I've discovered a whole lot. <laughs> um, but suffice for you know, getting into all those details, much, much of them, um, you know, one of the things that I did realize is, is, you know, is there is the necessity of being able to have, you know, various forms of content to be able to, you know, support what you're doing. And, you know, I'm at the point where, you know, I'm, in, I'm involved in starting multiple entities. I have got, I've got other things that which are actually not even, you know, entity based, but are just things that, you know, I now I'm at the point where I kind of feel like, well, yeah, you know, I, I actually really need to start making some some, you know, uh, public statements about a lot of this stuff. I mean, we have obviously we have artificial intelligence. I did I did a tweet in 2022 just saying, you know, right after a month after chat gtp came out that we've already reached agi right i think i was one of the first people to actually act, announce this of course you know i haven't really played that up yet but it's on record on twitter um it, you know there there's 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 a lot happening i mean you know apple's released this you know their apple provision there's now discussion about spatial computing I was doing virtual reality in 1993 when my thesis was on 3d audio, spatial computing, <laughs> you know, which was spatial computing. We were developing stuff at the media lab regarding, you know, spatial computing. I mean, all of us, all of these things, you know, in lots of different capacities are, are, you know, kind of happening now, right. At, at, at scale. And that's the salient point. They're happening at scale for the consumer. And, um, you know, we see, we see what these things are all disruptive, totally disruptive. We're going to completely transform every aspect of our society in ways that we cannot even comprehend because the fabric of, of our society is fundamentally architecturally different because underneath all these things, we're talking about architectural changes in the computation of what the machine is, right? 
And when you change architectures, and we understand this from biology, you know, anytime you have an architectural change, you know, you have a massive shift and every the huge disruption. And I don't know, you know, there's a lot of these things that I'm at the point where, okay, you know, it's probably about time for me to, you know, start talking about this stuff. Yeah. I would definitely advise because of your experience with that stuff and, and also the, the more recent work you've been doing with like blockchain legislation, I would say definitely get something together and put it out. I mean, it doesn't even have to be comprehensive. It doesn't even have to be expansive, but to have something that's out there that catalogs or categorizes that stuff, um, or even maybe takes a more, um, broad and and longitudinal look at what you've been involved with in terms of career or work that there, there might be something there i would say like it's it's not going to hurt for you to do that well uh, so i won't get into well maybe i can get into so <laughs> the details but you know on, on that vein and that's part of that's part of what's prompting this right is that um all right i'll just say it okay I've got 13 days, I think, uh, but and I haven't talked about this yet. But my, uh, you know, I'm I'm a computer scientist, as you know, and a computational legal hacker, and involved in all this stuff. But you know, with, with these Wyoming working groups, and we put forth forth legislation um, on this new form of uh, DAO, you know. Distributed Autonomous Organization. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to see... Uh, so it passed... It, it, the other day, it passed the, the House and the legislation. Right? And it just we're just waiting on the signature from the governor. And regardless of whether it gets signed by the governor or not, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in some other state. It's going to... You know, myself and and and... The, you know, two other lawyers involved. We know how to do this stuff. We're, we're going to do it. You know, there's nothing about it that has to be in statute, although it, it helps for scaling. You know, but th- there's there, it solves a lot of problems. And, you know, it's pretty clear to me that, uh, you know, we, we kind of have a responsibility to ex- explain this stuff because it's, you know, it, you, you, can't, you can't understand it without some. Brennan, you know what? I, I just realized too, I did an interview with a guy, um, last month who is a, uh, Dow consultant. So he does like, um, he basically advises Dow's in processes and development and stuff like that. So I shared the link to that tweet up above too. You might enjoy that one if you, if you want to save it. Um, his name is Spencer Cavanaugh and I had met him, uh, last year at some point trying to think of when it was maybe October, um, October, November. And then we had recorded that episode and I I finally got a chance to release it, but you might like that. I mean, he definitely talks pretty extensively about that and you might like to connect with him in general too. There might be some aspect of what you guys are doing that is valuable to each other or has some overlap. Yeah, that, it's great. Uh, thanks. Um, the question is, uh, I don't see where you posted it. Yeah, you might like that one. It's it's not a long conversation, you know what I mean? But in general, um, it kind of it'll go over a bunch of stuff that you're probably already familiar with. But I think um, valuably to you, uh, you get to have a short introduction to who he is. And if you wanted to reach out to him, that would be available to you as well. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly hitting the nail on the head. I mean, I can tell from you know what he's talking about here, Rust Belt, Belt Innovators. You know, that's fundamentally what what all of this stuff is about, right? It, it, it's about creating new economies, new economies in, in places where where you know we didn't have any, right? And and it's true for everybody, right? You know, that's what's so amazing about. You know, it's, it's sort of like what you're doing, right? You know, it's like what, what you're doing at the scale you're doing it, you know, was like impossible like 10 years ago, right? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, oh, so just some insight. Rust Belt Innovators is a brand channel that I produce. It's it's had a bunch of different incarnations. I used to do a website, um, and then I did a series of live events, kind of networking events and stuff like that, and, and would have presenters and, and different stuff. Um, now I just use it as basically like a technology and business podcast brand um, and then share out stuff. I'm always looking for anything relevant that I can push through those channels. And so they're on like Instagram and Facebook and here on Twitter and, uh, you know, different, different places on social and stuff like that. Um, so that's just kind of like one of the projects that I do. Oh, that, that's so funny. So I'm actually talking about talking to, um, the Rust Belt himself. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. All right, Mike, Michael, well, uh, I know, I, I know how to contact you. This is great. I'll contact, I'll try to get in contact with Spencer too. Yeah. But, um, he's on so, there as Clint Amenic. So you'll see he's tagged yeah, on yeah, that tweet too. So yeah. that's him, you know, and, um, you know, he's, he's super casual. He's on discord. If you're on discord, uh, I think it's the same handle or very similar or whatever, but if you dig him up, uh, or message him on here, then he'll, he'll probably get back to you. I would assume. Yeah. Great. We got somebody else in the room too. I don't want to hog all the conversation. Oh, I mean, well, they're they're hanging out. They're you know, I've passed them invites. They're they're more than welcome to to tag in if they want. Um, you know, otherwise, we'll just keep rapping. Uh, Gonzalo was up here two weeks ago, and you know, he he knows he's welcome as well. <laughs> like I don't I don't have to hound these guys. Um, this is like I said at the beginning. This is like pretty casual, freeform discussion. It's not really like a holding court. I don't have an agenda or anything like that. Um, it's just basically hanging out, talking about writing, talking about publishing, uh, talking about being an author, um, talking shop a little bit. If that is something that's valuable in terms of like making books or audio books or the trials and tribulations of being an author. Um, I kind of break it down into two sides. There's like being a writer, which is everything that you do before you compile your work. And then being an author is everything that you have to do after the fact of having a release to where you're trying to promote and, um, and brand and, and get attention and, and, uh, be accessible or be some kind of entity or, uh, you know, a personality or, uh, you know, anything like that. I don't want to use the term influencer, but, um, I guess there's some overlap between those things. I, I know there are authors who are influencers. I know that there are people that kind of consult and advise on writing who are shaped more like influencers. I'm not necessarily trying to be that way. That's not really what this is about. I just like hanging out every couple of weeks and, uh, talking a little bit and being able to hear from people and what they're doing and share some ideas and then, uh, put out a, a broadcast in turn in, in shape of a podcast, you know, every so often. So that's, that's more or less what this space is about. It's not, it's not super formal. Um, you know, maybe, it would be at some point in the future, but <laughs> today it's, it's pretty chill. It's not, um, it's not really meant to be, um, shaped like anything concrete, you know, I want to give Gonzalo a chance to talk if he wants to as well. Now that he's up on stage. Hey, uh, I'm, I might not be able to talk the whole time because there. Uh, I live. I live like three blocks away from um, from an air base, from an air force base, and I think they're doing. They're in the middle of some helicopter training drills or something. So like every cool. minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, it, it is kind of cool, but at the same time, every minute and a half right now, like these loud helicopters are flying by. So I might. You'll. You'll. You might. You'll know. You'll know. When, yeah. You'll know when it happens. All good. Uh, how was your space last night? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. We went over a little. We went a little bit over an hour, and we we workshopped the story, and it was fun. And I think the consensus was to stay. You know, I think that you know the the um, Tuesday night 
time slot is is pretty good, and and, and the people who are there seem to agree that it, you know it was it was a good time slot. So we're gonna stick with that for now. I've been, I mean, I start as you know, I started on like Friday mornings, and then I had a hiatus, and then I did like a one on Wednesday night. So I've been moving, I've been moving around, I've been trying around different um, different time slots, but I think Tuesday night's pretty good for now. So we're gonna stick with that with that. Yeah, if you want to share it up into here, you're more than welcome to do that as well. That way, oh, cool. folks okay. can, can check it out. That way, you know, if I, because I thought you told me you already scheduled it. So if you've got it available, like I'll, R- I did. Yeah, I'll, I'll RSVP. Uh, I couldn't make it last night, as I told you, I was watching Dune. Hey, yeah, tell, you're tell us what you're up to. Uh, I, I will give me one second because I'm very bad at doing two things at the same time. I just got this, <laughs> this post <laughs> pulled up and give me one second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, share. Wait. We heard the doorbell. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. But that wasn't, that wasn't for me. It wasn't so much that it's, it's the pulling up the post. Where is it? I never, I can remember if it's at the top right or if it's in the share, the share button, it's the share button. Cause on the computer, it's the, here we go. Post to Michael Finney space. Cause in the, in, on, mm. com- on the computer, it's the, it's a different icon. You can talk in spaces on your computer. It's very limited, but at least it's there, you know, yeah. at least there's something. And, and uh, you can, you can like, if you're a speaker, you can post the, the, the option to pin a post is, has a slightly different icon. Interesting. I was looking for that. So yeah, you know, basically looking to, to step into, uh, you know, doing writing full time, basically writing full time. And that involves, uh, becoming, you know, an author getting published, uh, living off books and stories and things. And, um, one thing that I'm doing a lot here is, uh, doing writing workshops, which I call the writer's room, which, uh, which for now are on Tuesday nights at 8 PM Eastern time. And uh, that's where we basically take somebody's idea and, uh, and try to work it into, into something a little more solid, you know, because sometimes people have like this kind of vague idea of what they want to do, but they're not exactly sure how to, how to build it out, how to go about it. Um, you know, how to plot out the, the sequence of events or what, you know, what to, how to, how to build characters. So I help out with that, uh, in kind of like a, like a, like a kind of like a talk show format, I guess. Um, but like the idea is to simulate, you know, this kind of writer's room where everyone pitches in, yeah. everyone brings in ideas, you know, to everyone to basically, you know, raise their hand and be like, what if the character did this? You know, not, not just me, but like whoever is present can, can kind of participate in, and, uh, build out the story together. For hey, sure. Gonzalo, can you, can you expand upon this, uh, writer's room construct? Because, um, it sounds really interesting. Uh, did you say expand upon? I didn't hear you right. Yeah, yeah. Tell me more, like, because uh, I'm new to it. What is what is the writer's room? It sounds like very collaborative. Well, it's like this. Uh, yeah. So, like, you know, imagine imagine a Hollywood writer's room, the way they depict it in movies, anyway. You know, where where there's a table and all the writers are there. There's like 10, 12 writers, and uh, and and they're all working on on the story at the same time, like workshopping it together, spitballing ideas, and basically building out either the world or the characters or or whatever you know, basically basically writing the story together. Because that's how it usually works on TV shows, right? It's not like one screenwriter sitting down or one novelist sitting down for however long. It's uh, it's more of a collaborative work. So so I got the idea to do that to start doing something like that last year, and and that's what we do now. And um, that's that's basically all there is to it. It's not much more. Like some people come in with like a very vague idea of, of a story they want to write about, you know, kids on a on a like in a park playing in a park on a on a playset on a play, you know they want to write a children's book about you know their kids playing together in in the yard, right? And they have some kind of an imaginary adventure, and that's kind of all you have. So we we start talking through it. I'm doing a, a program for the next two months where we're developing short videos using AI. Um, I had actually shared a preview of the one we'll release tomorrow up in the, the, the post area. And I've got a, I've got a kernel of an idea that I want to develop. I'll probably drop in there maybe next week. Uh, 
and okay. we can kick that around. It you have to think a little differently though, because you can't do everything that you might want to do with AI video that you can do with traditional editorial. Um, for right. now for now right i mean there's a lot you can do but at the same time like there are limitations so i have to kind of work around some of those limitations and i have i have kind of like a loose shell of where i want to go with it and i've already started developing what are called init images for video processing um so there's a there's a couple of scenes that are and i use that term loosely um that i'll want to kind of utilize but it, it might be viable to kick around with everybody if you're if they're familiar with you know screenwriting or creating a treatment um or ai video or video in general filmmaking at all um you know hopefully i i could get some feedback there uh what do you what do you mean when you say think differently like when when you think like with the, you have what, what's your let's no let's let's uh Let's let's work it out if you want right now. We can, I mean, get at least get started on it. What is the kernel that you that you have? What's your like basic idea? So it's going to be historical sci-fi, but the when I'm talking about thinking differently, I'm meaning you can't do a lot of like traditional dialogue types of scenes. You can kind of do like one person on screen for a little while and have them read some line. And then you can have somebody else on screen and have them read some line. But it's very, very tough to have them both on screen reading lines, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. Uh, and and yeah. like things will fall apart, um, you know, if they're in profile. Say you had two people in profile facing each other and, and you're doing generative off of that. Um, you know, it won't always know who to focus on to put those lines in their mouth or potentially it'll put the lines in both people's mouths. So they're both simultaneously talking at each other, which can be useful, but not always. Um, so that's kind of, those are some of the limitations that you kind of run across there. But, can, can I ask a question? There are, yeah. There, there are workarounds for that though. I mean, I, I can think of workarounds. Go ahead. Uh, right. Brendan. Oh yeah. So. Um, I guess, I guess it, to me, it sounds in part like it's an architectural issue, right? So, you know, the, the inherent problem with, you know, with, with, with video is that it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a 2d representation of a 3d world. So when we shoot video, we have, you know, when you're composing video, you're compo composing it, you know, as, you know, from the 2D perspective, but inherently it's a 3D problem. So the question really is, you know, and I think this is what Nadalis is probably hinting at, and my guess is that, you know, if, if you were to create, if, if, if the architecture problem is, is that you're creating video, probably that you're creating video in just regular, from a regular 2D video standpoint, rather than creating video in which the architecture itself is natively 3D. Right, so if you're doing something like Sora, S Sora, I think that's the name of it. I don't think anybody's using Sora yet because it's not accessible. Yeah, but I mean, you, well, you, you get the idea. Yeah, I know it's it's not accessible well, except for the the testers, right? But um, you know, g generally speaking, um, yeah, those ideas will be resolved. But go ahead, sorry. Well, what I was going to say about that, like, what, the the thing that I was thinking of is that like those kinds of problems, Michael, are more for like later on down the line, right? Uh, it's like saying, you know, where we're going to hire a lighting electrician if we're at the screenwriting stage, you know what I mean? Like the first thing that I would look at is what kind of story do you want to tell? What is it that you want to say, right? What, what's the message? Why do you want to do this? Is it just an experiment or do you want to tell an actual story? And then sit down and, and like flesh out your story, write it, and then figure out, then we'll figure out how best to tell it. Because I started writing like what, what I was going to imagine, what I was imagining were going to become books. And then I suddenly started noticing that a lot of what I was writing was better, was going to be better told through images, 
So I started going into like heavily illustrated books. And then the book that I finished that I've told you about before is like basically a comic prose hybrid. Yeah. And now I'm like, I'm, I've di- I'm diving into <laughs> basically a comic book issue. I'm like, like, I've taken it upon myself to write just, you know, all out, write a comic book issue. Cause I've got this story and, and this opportunity came up, this competition. I was like, nah, let's do it. Like, let's go. So I started writing the thing and, and like, I could write that story as a novel if I wanted to, or as a screenplay. In fact, you could start as, as, as one thing, as a short story. How many movies have, you know, come from short stories or novels or comic books or whatever, right? So the medium in the end isn't going to be the most important part. The most important part is going to be, what do you want to say? Let me interject a couple of things here. So the medium for this is the most important part because we're funded for this project and I have to turn this stuff out. So the limitations of the technology are critical to circle back around. Yeah. I definitely want to tell a story. It needs to be narrative, but we have to use these tools. So that's, um, at the baseline of what we're doing for this because, uh, we are in discussions for additional distribution through a, a couple of different channels and they want a particular thing. So the, the tools of AI that's upfront, that is, you know, that's like the first thing on the table, the storytelling piece has to go through that lens. I have to funnel everything through that lens. So if you're familiar with those things, uh, or not, um, you know, maybe I can pass you a couple of things to show you some examples of kind of like where the industry is at with those things today. And then that way, like come next Tuesday, you'll have, um, you know, a general sense of what's viable. And then also I can, I can kind of reshare some of those, those examples, uh, into that space. And also our first video will be getting released tomorrow. So I'll have that as, as an example as well. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at with it because like we've got two months of runway, which is a video generation platform funded for this team. And then, um, you know, there are a handful of other tools and assets, resources and stuff like that, that everybody kind of comes to the table with and, and uses, whether they're for image generation or sound, um, uh, video editing and, and all these things and, and basically use this collection of tools and, and resources to be able to get these shorts out. Um, the goal here is to have something new every week that we're producing. So in that way, like I can't spend a whole lot of time fleshing out a grand long story. These are intended to be shorts. Um, so like, you know, two minutes, in, in that phase of things and to be able to get as much narrative packed into that, but then also really uh, exemplify the state of the art of the, of the technology that we're using today um, in, in the capacity of these, sto- of these stories, you know, and to be able to, uh, to do it that way. So that's, it, it is, it is pretty critical that in that sense. I, yeah, I see, I see no problem with that. I, I think I, may have misspoke before I, I i didn't mean that it's not important uh you know the the, the medium uh but you know and, and like lots of people work based on basically this, this is what it would be like to work on commission right somebody wants you to do a short story somebody wants you to do a comic somebody wants you to do a short film somebody wants you to showcase the capabilities of ai and that's why they're doing this so i, I mean I, I so i totally get that what i meant was that it, as far as writing the thing that you're going to make, um, you don't need to worry about, I, guess, I mean, we do have to keep it in mind, of course, but we don't necessarily have to worry so much about the, that kind of limitation, the limitations you were talking about, because we can figure it out later. As long as character, the character does this thing, you know, as long as character A jumps from the building, it doesn't matter if we use, you know, if, if we were doing this like uh, with, with real world cameras, right, if we were doing a short film. It doesn't matter if we do it with an aerial view because we don't have a drone or if we, or if we do it like on rails, we, we might not have access to, to a dolly or if we do it like with, with like a handheld camera. The, the point is that that part of the story is written in such a way that the character uh, uh, hasn't, has had, decides that he's had enough and he wants to run off the building and jump, right? 
that's that's the thing that we're writing. So we'll, we figure out what kind of camera we're using, whether it's a dolly or, or a drone shot or whatever later. But but like the, the 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 structure itself of what happens in the story is what's most important. And yeah, and like it can be short stories, it can be short videos, two minutes long, or it can be uh, an epic. I mean, it's better to write. It's even um, especially for a one hour workshop it's it's much easier to figure out okay so what's this little story going to be about okay so this character wants to do this thing he's trying to get a briefcase but he can't because he has to cross the train tracks you know so you just figure out that little story and then and then you build out how how it's going to get how you're going to get produced yeah Yeah, for sure yeah i I appreciate it now i'll definitely try and get a little bit more fleshed out before tuesday that way uh i don't come (laughs) empty-handed in that in that sense <laughs> hey eric dude i see cool. here if you would like to come up on stage and talk about your work promote anything we also did a podcast episode recording that is on its way it will be getting released not too much further in the future it'll be this month um a couple more weeks i think uh, i'll i'll get that one out um but like I said, you know, I, I pass you invites. So if you'd like to come up and, and chat about your stuff, you're more than welcome to. Uh, this is pretty free form. This is not, um, there's not like a formula or agenda or anything like that. Also, Gonzalo does a space. Is it every week that you are doing it? Yes, it's going to be every week. Cool, cool. Yeah. It was every week at the beginning. And then I had a really long hiatus in December. Then I started up again, but I had to stop again for a couple of weeks. But now it's 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 going to be a weekly thing, Tuesday nights. Dope. Eric, what's up, man? How's it been? Oh, can you guys hear me? I can now. Hey, no, I just wanted to say, hey, guys, uh, I can't actually join you. I'm actually at work uh, just listening <laughs> in. So <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, uh, you know, Eric's a writer as well. He's got some books. I mean, now you're on stage. You're more than welcome to share some links if you'd like. Um I realize you're at work or whatever, but, uh, it's all good. Yeah. I guess, uh, Eric wag, uh, dot com. And, uh, I'm on Amazon Citadel of seven swords. And my new book is weird of the skull totem. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't really have anything prepped. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and also so drop it and say hi. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And we'll be doing your podcast. Like I said, in the next couple of weeks, oh, nice. it'll be coming out. So, um, definitely, looking forward to getting that one out as uh you know everything keeps rolling forward well thank you yeah appreciate you taking the time gonna uh just go back to listening and uh yeah <laughs> cheers guys no sweat man thanks can i jump in quick a second you can yeah thanks eric uh, you know i wanted to say you know and this is i know from you know from lots of conversations with michael in the past you know and this is what's really, really interesting and exciting, right? You know, it, w- w- what you're saying there, Eric. You know what I, I love? What I love to do, and I think I think inherently, I know Michael loves to do this, and I can, can tell that from Gonzalez too. You know, you 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 go down the rabbit hole, right? You know, and and you know what what you're involved in, Eric. You know, I don't really know anything about, but it's interesting when you when you start to go down that rabbit hole and you kind of like figure out, you know, what, what are all the problems? What are all the bottlenecks, you know, to whatever, to, to publishing, to marketing, to creating, whatever, all these kinds of things. It is so useful to be able to, you know, think both broadly and very deeply about these things. And, and just, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I love these spaces and, and thanks for sharing. Dude, Eric is actually a, a very um, like expansive writer. Somehow in like the last, I think it was two years or something like that, he's already put out like four books and they're like novel length. They're not small either. Uh, maybe two of them are a little bit shorter, but then two of them are very, very big books, man. Like I can't, uh, I, I don't know if I have a novel in me at some point, maybe, I don't know but it's not even on my radar at this point. Uh, but he does, he does fiction kind of sword and sorcery, um, material. Some of it is fantastic. And then some of it is also in the recent, uh, like Chicago land area where the characters are ported into 
a more modern era 1970s Chicago land. And, uh, you know, I think that's interesting. We did talk at length about it. I don't want to give everything uh, away from the podcast because then you can actually listen to him tell you as, as opposed to me. Uh, but for today, if anybody has anything else they want to share, we've been going for like an hour. So that's usually how long I, I let it rip. We record and then I, I put these out in the, in the coming weeks. If there are any closing thoughts. Yeah, you know, the only thing that I'm, that I'm working on right now is, uh, like I've been, like I said, I've embarked on this, on this new uh, comic book journey because I've always liked uh, comic books, and I think I've been kind of inching my way towards that kind of storytelling anyway, from straight up prose to including panels to now basically just diving in and seeing what happens with this little quote little uh, issue that I, that I'm taking upon myself to write. Uh, we'll see what happens, but I've always like I'm using actually like the story that I'm going to write is something that I've been that I've been like mulling around in my head for uh, I guess a good couple of years now. So I'm really excited about it. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since since I you know saw the opportunity and decided to do it, and I actually submitted a proposal to a writer's grant. <laughs> and even in you know it's more than 200 entries, but even if I don't win, um, being realistic, I'm still I'm still I decided to just go for it. And, uh, and that's like that between that and the other book, and um, that's, that's what basically op- occupies my mind most of the time these days. Yeah. I've, I'm finding now that I've started to do a little bit of fiction that it's becoming easier for me to find ideas with it and explore them that way, as opposed to the, the journalistic side of things. Um, which to me is not, not reporting. Um, it's, it's more about documentation um or maybe the the documentarian outlook on things not so much uh just like giving the facts i i i'm typically a part of whatever i'm documenting and uh being journalistic about typically uh even back to when i was doing um writing for for print publications and stuff back in the day with um, arts and culture and stuff like that. It was always, I was involved, you know, uh, whether it was a live show or or whatever. Um, But yeah, so we'll wrap it up for today. This is fantastic. I do appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. And, um, you know, we'll be back in two weeks with another hangout and and talk shop. Um, You know, everybody's welcome to come in report back on whatever you've got. And obviously in two more weeks, I will be a little further with the AI film shorts and stuff like that. So I'll have a few more to show or more, more of them to show, um, in in totality and probably talk a little bit about some of that process right now. I am working on my video for next week because the one for tomorrow I finished a couple of days ago. So that's finished. There's a preview up above and um the next one is going to be themed for St. Patrick's Day so it'll come out next Thursday the 14th um and you know that'll be that that'll be kind of like the first really uh encapsulated short film narrative fiction piece that that I'll have been done that I'll have done but then also have been uh, done with these tools as well so yeah hey thanks guys and be good we will talk before too long <laughs>